the legend who's been around this team for the good, the bad, the ugly. And we're going to get to that in a second with him. But I'd like to introduce and welcome to the Sports Bash with us here on 97.3, Mr. Tom McGinnis. What's up, man? How Hi, are you Ryan, doing Doing today? good. Thanks doing for good. Uh, thanks for joining us. Great day on the beach, huh? I Six mean, short tour continues. It's not the worst place to be. This is considered work for you, I guess. Oh, this is great. Yeah. <laughs> now with the ocean breeze and the fans and the atmosphere, it's a pretty neat, uh, neat afternoon. It certainly is. So you've been around, like I said just a minute ago. You've been around for the good years, the bad years, I guess, the process years, as some people like to say. What's it like entering this season, this year? With Have you ever seen the buzz at a level like this? I mean, 2001, that run is the only run that I can think of in my lifetime. Right. So this is my, this will be my 25th season. Wow. Yep. So, and I'll tell you, like, the excitement when a team is on the rise. Yes. That's oftentimes that's as much fun as I won't say getting there because that's the ultimate in terms of trying to compete for a championship. Uh, but certainly the lead up is as much fun as anything. And there is a lot of hype and there's and understandably so because certainly as Coach Brown, this will be his seventh year. Uh, and just by way of speaking of my tenure and the Sixers, like this is the longest that a coach has been since I've been with the team. Larry Brown was wow. there for six years. But, uh, you know, as your fortunes change, oftentimes there's a, a change at the top. But my point about Coach Brown is this is probably the most talent that he's ever had. Absolutely. Uh, when you consider Ben and Joel and Tobias Harris, and now you add El Horford and, and Josh Richardson. So it's going to be great. It, it's going to take time, though, you know, like uh, – Coach Brown talked about last season having three different teams, the one they broke camp with, yeah. the Sixers with Jimmy Butler, and then you had Tobias and Boban and Mike, and you get a different group that uh, finished the season, and this is a different group. You know, like when you consider Al and, and Josh Richardson, you're going to bring Thibel into the mix. Zaheer is going to be part of the mix. Yeah. Ennis will be back for a full camp in a season. Uh, so it's not it, – nothing is a foregone conclusion. But this team is built to compete and to guard and to play at a high level. And it's going to take time, you know. I mean, sure. I, you have to put uh, a little caution there. And the schedule's different, you know. Like, we, we never, I don't think we've maybe once gone out west so soon. Mm -hmm. But that's a like the second week of the season. Right away. After playing Boston at home, which will be really exciting at the center, the opener on October 23rd. And then you go to Detroit. And the Sixers, they gained their first win there two years ago. Uh, at the Little Caesars Arena, and then down to Atlanta where they lost twice last year, and then, you know, I believe you come home, but then my point is then you go out west and you play Portland, and Phoenix is going to be a young up-and-coming team in the west, but Utah and Denver, so those are, those are that's a trip typically has been maybe certainly at Christmas time, the new year, and then oftentimes in March, that's a tough trip to have so early in the season. Like, yep. it's probably good for the, you know, the, the the group being on the road together, but difficult opponents right out of the gate. It certainly is, and, and the schedule's interesting. That was released, uh, I think, last week now at this point, maybe five, seven days ago. And I uh, definitely want your thoughts on that in just a second. But this offseason in particular, the expectations for last season may have been a little bit unrealistic, like you said, with the young group and – the changing of the team was really something I've never seen before, and I don't think you, it's not a common thing to have three legitimate different types of rotations all in one year. So with that being said, this particular summer, this offseason was under a microscope to the fans and the media at least. So I want your thoughts on the moves that the, the front office and Elton Brand and the team and the direction that the team decided to go in with the likes of Al Horford and Josh Richardson and deciding to move on from Jimmy Butler, who was well-liked in this town. Well, I think you talk about personnel changes. I, I think it actually starts with ownership yeah. in terms of the commitment to, shall we say, swing for the fences, you know, and, and acquiring Jimmy Butler and, and then, um, you know, making the move for, to re-sign Tobias. I mean, that's the richest contract in Sixers history right there. And then to, he, he's obviously then a foundational piece with Ben sure. and with Joel. And then by, you know, making a, a fiscal decision, but also a personnel decision to move on from Jimmy Butler, 
you're able to sign Al Horford, who is, you know, I think the Sixers gained two wins a year just by not having to face Al Horford. <laughs> Absolutely, boss. at least, yep. He said partly in jest, but not <laughs> entirely, because he's that good, and he's, yep. he'll be, you know, he's 33, he'll be 34 years old, he's been a winning player, a five-time All-Star, and just, to me, it's like a rudder. He, he's so good, he, like, he anchors your defense, he really played extremely well over the years against Joel, and yet, you know, can make a big shot, moves the ball, and then just a high character guy in terms of Horford. And, and that's what, when you're building your team, that still has to be, talent trumps everything, but, you know, guys that have high character and that blend together and are in it for the team, those are, you can never get away with that in basketball. That, that has to be one of the, one of your beacons, one of your guiding lights. And then Richardson, you know, people, a lot of people say Josh Richardson's a young Jimmy Butler. I mean, it's rare, Ryan, that a guy increases his scoring average every year. Yeah, that's that's what he's done. And, you know, when but but having said that, when the Sixers played the Heat, I always thought of him as a as a defender, somebody you could put out in space and guard. And so I, I think he's going to really. And then you get him as he enters his prime. So I think he's going to be really a, a great addition for the team. So it's it is. It's the Sixers are. You know, we, we've gone through a lot to get to this point. But I think that, you know, to borrow a phrase, the, the moment has arrived. It certainly has. Tom, it, it's funny when you talk about the Boston Celtics, and a lot of people used to say the Celtics were doing it the right way uh, because they got Kyrie Irving, they had Jalen Brown, the Jason Tatum, Markel Fultz deal. But you look at the Sixers today, and you look at the Celtics today, you can make an argument that the Sixers did it the right way. They got their foundational pieces, and they built around them while the Celtics tried to strike while the iron was hot, get a guy like Kyrie, lose him in free agency, and now you're really building around one guy in Tatum, which albeit you got from the Sixers, but the Sixers, I think, today are the better team than the Celtics. Right. Well, when you talk about doing it the right way, in the end, it's going to be who, who gets to that Lawrence O'Brien trophy first, right? I mean, that's, that's the ultimate standard, is winning a championship. And again, just going back to ownership and the leadership, like it's the Sixers have been trying to build – a team that can compete for a championship for years to come like and, and with Joel and Ben and now Tobias I think you, you put yourself in that position but just to kind of step back in a more general view like player movement has never been like this before no you know what I mean like when you talk about the Sixers and the Celtics you were used to those teams even going back into the 60s and then the teams in the 80s those those guys for them it was We'll, we'll go with the 80s version, the late 70s, 80s, like McHale and Bird and Parrish and Ainge and, and Dennis Johns. Those, those guys were together for consecutive years. And obviously from the Sixers side, you had the legendary names of Cheeks and, and Tony and Julius Irving. And, and then they had Moses Malone. That, that's shifted a little, little bit. You know, it's not – hopefully it'll, it'll – turn into that certainly with these long-term deals with the Sixers I think you're looking at a group that could be together for a while and and that for the fans that's how the rivalries you know percolate a little bit and obviously with the Celtics we've, we've had that for centuries I mean not centuries but for decades um, so who's to see but Boston that's another team like you can never, you know, they added Kemba Walker, who <laughs> arguably might be a better fit. I think he's so. Certainly a guy I who's given so. the Sixers problem. Uh, he's 60 points down in Charlotte. And, you know, he's just a really hard player to guard. And and they uh, they have a lot more than just Jason Tatum, you know, I mean, with, with Brown and whatnot. So th that shapes up to be a good matchup. You can't count, I mean, I, I wouldn't say the Knicks are going to be in the mix, but they're going to be much improved. They got a lot of young talent there. And, sure. you know, like, you just have to be solidly consistent in terms of the Sixers and beat the teams that you should beat, and then get into these, you know, these these rivalries and these these high attention type games, marquee matchups, if you will, and and handling your business there is to the best of your ability. I've been on record saying that the Sixers will go not as far as Joel Embiid goes. He's the best player on the team. He's going to be magnificent. But Ben Simmons, if his game upgrades. And I'm not talking about him coming out there hitting threes like Steph Curry. That's not realistic. He has to shoot threes. He has to at least attempt jump shots and look aggressive shooting the ball, whether he makes or misses it, to really take that next step. I said that's the difference between the Sixers being in the finals this year or losing before the finals in the second round of the East Conference Finals. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, that's a very valid, very valid assessment. You know, first of all, I think Ben has been incredible in terms of 
you consider rookie of the year and then an all-star last year and you know the skill set that we've become familiar with you know you just don't see too many 610 players with that athletic ability and uh and you're right you know and i and obviously putting in a lot of time on that whether it's you know multiple threes but the part about shooting 18 footers and 20 footers and all that the 20 footers now the you know the the bane if you will of of analytics people and it's, it's the long two is not but at the elbows and stopping and popping and, and shooting out of transition that certainly would open up a lot of doors um and, and it could be and i think it's also that too will be a work in progress not just 19 and 20 but as he progresses into his fourth year and beyond uh, this being his third season but make no mistake ben simmons is going to be an improved player with the time he's put in and the commitment and the skill set that he's building upon. Absolutely. Now, do you think, you know, just one or two more questions for you, Tom. We're with Tom McGinnis, the Sixers voice on the airwaves. You can listen to him every Sixers game right here on 97.3 ESPN Radio. And now, Tom, you know, we talk about the development and the expectations of young core pieces in Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Do you feel like that those guys are ready to be leaders in the locker room, not on the floor, but off the floor because that's just as important in my opinion as what they do on the court is can they be guys that the rest of the locker room looks to and i know your play kind of speaks for that but are they ready to lead an nba team to hold up that o'brien trophy well and, and that's a great point and i think so you know and they're going to get you don't none of this is done by oneself or as a duo you now you have tobias so i think you're going to see um, you know, again, going back to his, the first part of last year for him with the Clippers, this guy was on an all-star clip shooting threes over 40%. And he, you know, about high character, you know, he, he's certainly a guy that's going to be a part of that. And then I think also Al Horford, you know, in terms of being able to, to, to look in that locker room and be on those buses and be on that plane with, with this guy who's been uh, a proven winner, uh, obviously a champion in college. And so, you know, it, but it is in the end, you're right. It's Joel and, and it's Ben. I mean, these are the guys that are, if the Sixers are going to attain everything that we hope that they can, it is in large part going to be uh, the strengths of their game and their leadership, you know, both on and off the court. Absolutely. Now, Tom, you said you've been with the team for 25 25- years <laughs> so it's 24 years complete okay this month and then this will be the start of the my first season was 1995 96 we were still at the spectrum believe it or not how about that wow and uh harold that was jerry stackhouse's rookie year yes harold Katz was the owner of the Sixers at the time and then obviously made the uh the shift to the center and uh yeah so go ahead yeah no so 21 years for this particular event the Sixers Summer Shore Tour, and how have you seen it seen it grow and evolve over the years? Because you've right. been involved with this, I know, for a long time. Yeah, no, I think I've been to every single one. There you go. It's neat. <laughs> and the Jersey Shore is just great. Uh, it's an awesome thing. It's really become a summer tradition here, and um, this is we've been in Wildwood before, but to have this kind of be the the primary focus this summer is, is tremendous. There's a great crowd out there, and you see so many young people uh, coming in off the beach and been blessed with Zaheer here this afternoon and Josh Richardson looks like he might be signing autographs now at the tent. Uh, it's a great uh, a feel good reach out if you will by the organization to the fans uh, here in the summer and, and Jersey Shore life as you know driving down here today when you see uh, so many families uh, for their rentals during the, the week that uh, get in on a Saturday. I'm sure we're going to drive out with a lot of those I'm sure uh, we will. <laughs> later today as well. Uh, but no it's, it's a great environment. And it just shows you a lot of the the attention, the excitement, uh, everything gathered around the team. Absolutely. Tom McGinnis spending a few minutes with us today on the show. He is the voice of the Philadelphia 76ers on your airwaves. Like I said, you can listen to him for every game right here on 97.3 ESPN. The buzz around this team, as you can feel it today in August, (laughs) it's starting to become Eagles time. The Phillies have had a very exciting week with a lot of buzz and hype. But the Sixers seem to always find a way in recent years to 
lead a lot of the attention, and it's going to be a, a very exciting season coming up with some new additions. Tom McGinnis will be there every step of the way. Tom, thanks for having a few minutes of well, your time. You got today. it, guys. Well, the NBA has become a year-round proposition, and the Sixers, as you say, uh, even during the course of the offseason, uh, garner a lot of attention, and uh, it should be great. Thank you very much. There you go. Tom McGinnis, everyone.